Hyundai and Kia have taken over the car industry by storm in the past decade and are now producing some of the best selling vehicles on the market. They've covered every car buyer category out there. From compact SUVs to luxury vehicles to sports cars and even insane electric vehicles. Their exponential growth from an economic car brand lacking credibility to a car industry leader is quite the story. But it didn't happen overnight. No, it took decades of innovation and today we are going over how the Hyundai Motor Group knocked down the Japanese car makers front door and scooped up a huge share of their customer base. Anyways friends, I'm Sep. Welcome back to a new video. If you're new to the channel, I'm a car enthusiast making videos for car enthusiasts like yourselves and I try to post a new video every week so feel free to subscribe to get your weekly dose of YouTube car content. The Hyundai Motor Group was founded in 1967 by Chung Ju Young. He was born in North Korea and is the perfect example of a Reg Service's story. Chung was the eldest of seven children from an impoverished family. His early years consisted of hard farm work which took up most of his time, therefore limiting his ability to attend school. He founded his business Acumen by selling lumber during his trips into town and eventually tried to break out of his farm life through a few different jobs in construction, accounting, rice sales, and car repair services. After World War II, Chung used his past work experience to start Hyundai Motors and Hyundai Civil Industries to capitalize on the need of post-war reconstruction. Although his business was picking up momentum, he unfortunately had to flee to Busan during the invasion of North Korea in 1950. Despite this setback, he ended up striking gold by winning major government contracts once all the border conflicts subsided. With the money he made from his successful construction projects, he hired former Austin Morris boss George Turnbull in the 1970s to lead the development of the first Hyundai car. Austin Morris was a British car manufacturer that helped produce iconic cars such as the Mini. The result of Chung's move to work with George resulted in the first South Korean car, the Hyundai Pony. An economic hatchback with British design philosophy and a Japanese powertrain from Mitsubishi. The next few cars Hyundai released were all co-developed with Mitsubishi, such as the 1986 Hyundai Grandeur, an executive sedan which shared the same platform as the Mitsubishi Debonair. The 1989 Excel, replacing the Hyundai Pony, it was available as either a hatch or sedan and was based on the second generation Mitsubishi Mirage. And of course, the Hyundai Sonata. Introduced in 1985, it was mostly designed by Mitsubishi, but by 1998, the Sonata was designed and built with Hyundai's proprietary tech. 1998 was also the year when Hyundai started to trend higher in the car industry. A catalyst for this was when the Asian economic crisis crippled countless companies all over Asia. Kia, Hyundai's rival in Korea, was about to go under, but Hyundai acquired a majority stake in the company and kept Kia afloat as a subsidiary of Hyundai. This acquisition also helped cut costs, as in-house development and research were shared. The year after, in 1999, another change in the company was the handover of the CEO role to Chung Mong Koo, Chung Ju Young's son. Now, there's obviously some nepotism involved here, but Chung Mong Koo pushed the success of the company even further. To take on the larger, trusted Japanese automakers, Chung Mong Koo helped enforce a corporate directive to place quality above all else. Chung Mong Koo wasn't perfect though, he did get convicted of some embezzlement crimes in 2006, but that's for a different video. Anyways, Hyundai added a 10 year or 100,000 mile warranty to cars sold in the United States. Even today, Hyundai's warranty ranks high compared to other car manufacturers. This emphasis on quality awarded Hyundai in 2004 second place in initial quality by JD Power and Associates. The next thing Hyundai heavily pursued was innovation. The 2000s brought about more and more advancements in technology and it was easy for car manufacturers to be left behind. So therefore, Hyundai set up innovation centers to purely focus on research and development. Currently, Hyundai has a total of 8 research and development centers. 3 in South Korea and the rest being located in Japan, China, India, Germany and the United States. All of these innovation centers focus on the next generation of automotive vehicles, while being able to hone in on the consumer demand of their respective regions. 
Now, the last power move Hyundai Motor Group did was exactly the same strategy done to get their first car released, by poaching some of the best engineers and designers in the car industry. You know what they say, if you can't beat them, make them join you, I think. Anyways, some notable key members Hyundai acquired include Thomas Burkle, former BMW designer for the BMW 3 Series E46 and 6 Series E63. He was hired as head of Hyundai's design center in Germany. Peter Schreier, former Audi designer for the Audi TT. Albert Biermann, former vice president of engineering at the BMW M division. He's the mastermind behind the N line. Luke Donkervolk, former design director of Bentley, Lamborghini, and Audi. Sangyup Lee, former designer of the Bentley Continental GT and C6 Corvette. Filippo Perini, former Lamborghini head of design. Sasha Salapanov, former designer of the Bugatti Chiron and Vision Gran Turismo. Some of these individuals are no longer with the Hyundai Motor Group, but all of them contributed greatly to the design evolution of the car lineup of Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis. The Hyundai Motor Group was the underdog amongst the rest of the car industry, and its humble origins make its global success so much more impressive. Amazing car designs are constantly being released by them. Their cars come with an insane amount of standard features, compared to other car manufacturers who offer these features at an additional cost. The design aesthetic really stands out. From the sharp angles to the boxy retro look, they threw out the standard design philosophy and did something unique, different, and exciting. Something I know we can all appreciate in the car community. Also, they've encapsulated the driving experience. Whether it be luxurious or engaging, you can find what you're looking for in their extensive lineup. In 2022, Hyundai Motor Group passed General Motors taking over as the third largest car manufacturer in the world, only behind Toyota in second and Volkswagen Group in first. They've got a long way to go to catch up to the top two, but at this rate, I wouldn't be surprised if they do. Anyways friends, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. I appreciate it very much. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.